Welcome back everyone, and we're gonna finish up splicing this cord. And when we last left off, we were splicing this cord to this mouse. Uh, there was nothing wrong with it, so I just cut it open with a pair of scissors. And what you first had to do is you had to cut off, you see like this wire right here? You had to strip it so you have the primary wires. The white, blue, green, and orange. And you had to do this to both sides. And then what you had to do was to tr trim the wire off so you could see this copper wire right here. It's the actual wire itself. <coughs> if you really want to know about how to do this, I suggest you go and watch video one or part one, how to splice a wire. And today we're going to actually, we might actually be testing this mouse out on this video today. So what we're going to do is, you're basically, you're primarily done with this knife. This knife is basically for step one. However, you are going to need this tape. Now this is the most important stop. Now there, I have a warning. If you cross these wires, like say you have green and green together and the white wire is touching the green and green, and you plug this into your computer, you're going to corrupt your mouse. It's going to corrupt your computer. It possibly could even fry it. So make sure you're doing this correctly. But there is a real easy way to do this, and we're going to start off with, with the orange wire first. So what you're going to want to do, take all these other wires except for orange, bend them back, pinch them with this finger. Same thing with the other one. Bend them back. Pinch them with this finger so they'll kind of stay there. And then what you're going to want to do, like it's just like tying a shoe. You take it, you interlace these wires at the bottom, like how you would make an axe. And then you pinch it with your last dominant hand. Grab these, and just like a strip of DNA, you know how like they intersect and they like kind of swirl around each other? Well, that's what you have to do with these wires. You twist them up together, and boom, they should look like that. Now they're connected. And then what you want to do, so they're not just sticking out there, bend it to one side of the wire. And this is where your scotch tape comes in. Take a small piece of scotch tape, just about a fingertip's length. This is the most important part. I'm telling you, you gotta watch this stuff. Alright, take the tip, put it here, and then wrap the tape around the wire. Doesn't have to be perfect, remember you're just trying to fix stuff. You're not trying to like make it absolutely look gorgeous. I mean, it is just a computer mouse. And I'm just gonna, I like to double up on it, so you can have double layers of tape, just to make positive that it does not come loose. And try to really pinch that tight. As tight as you can get it. And now once you have that, orange is now completed. And now we're going to move on to the next cord. Like, such as green. I'm going to actually do it green now. Make sure these cords are color-coded for a reason. Not for this reason, but for when they're actually being constructed in a factory for that reason, so the workers don't fuck up. Do the same thing for what we did for orange. Pinch it with your last dominant hand. Interlace the wires. Just like this. So it should look like the cords are connected just like that. And then what you do is you bend this wire down so it's out of the way. Get another piece of scotch tape. Yet again, about a fingertips length for the first one. And then you just wrap it. And electrical tape actually does way better for this than scotch tape. I would have used electrical tape. Couldn't, didn't have any on hand though. Pinch it tight. And then you go for your second piece of tape just to make sure everything's in place. There we go. Two cords are now complete. And now we're going to go for blue. Pinch it with your least dominant hand. Then interlace with your dominant hand. 
on the other hand, you're more accurate with to do the harder stuff for. Her. There you go, blue is now interlaced. It should look like that. Try to get it adjusted. So now, you bend it over. Another piece of scotch tape. We're actually almost done with this. It's really simple depending on how many cords there are. I mean, if this... If we were trying to rewire, like, uh... A power cord for a computer, now that would be a job right there. That would actually be re really difficult. I've actually had to do that, done that before, or do that before, yeah. I've done that before. But you have to be really cautious with power cords because if you don't wire them correctly, they can fry whatever electronics they're hooked to. That's why you never interlace cords of the opposite color. Always enter these cords that are the correct color with themselves. Okay, one more cord to go, and this thing should be all set. And it is the white cord. So what you're going to want to do is pinch that at the bottom, just like tying a shoe, interlace it back up. So it's nice, nice and tight. Put that cord to the side, and our final two pieces of scotch tape for wiring the cord. There we go. This also works for Ethernet cables, too. I had my dog chewed my Ethernet cable the other day, and I had to rewire it. Okay, and there you go. When you're all finished, all the cords should be look like this. All color-coded. Now, what I want you to do is just to make sure, go through each of those cords. Make sure none of them are really sticking out or inter interlaced with each other. Yeah, you see this white cord has one of the brass ones that's still coming out just a little bit. It's a good thing I caught that. As long as the cords are not touching, I mean they're tape, once they're taped and the tape is touching each cord, it's fine. It's like, it's like armor. Okay, there you go. Ugh. That's what it should look like when it's done. And now we're not just going to leave it like this because as soon as it gets yanked, it's just going to rip. So what you're going to want to do, this is important right here. Okay, get another piece of tape once. You go like this. Hold your cord just like this. So it's going to take a few inches off of the mouse, but... And you tape it right here. Or actually, no, no, wait, I have a better idea of taping this. Instead of cutting all of that, all of that length off, it's a better idea. Leave it like that. Tape it all the way across. So this will improve the cord's strength. I mean, it can still get, it's always going to be weaker than the rest of the cord because you had to do some moderate repairing on it. But at least you didn't have to go out and buy a new one. And this really works for expensive items, like cords that are like fucking 60 bucks, 70 bucks, when you could just do this. Most people look at a cord and it's like, oh crap, it's shot, time to go buy a new one. And anyway, we're just about out of time, so if you want to see if it works or not, please look at video 3. Thanks for tuning in.